This is In Boot Camp, episode 26, The End, on Sunday, July 14th, 2019, with your hosts, Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampersad. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash ib26. Hey. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. How about you? Good. The boot camp is finally over. Finally over. You finally finished your boot camp. Yep. Finally finished the boot camp. So I don't have to go outside today because it is just way too hot out. Way too hot out. Well, it is funny, though, because you actually did go outside today and quite extensively. So and uh, I know all of our audience members would love to hear about how hot it was outside today and your adventures out and about. You see, I wasn't going to talk about that because earlier today, host Ryan Ramper said tried to murder me with the sun. We went for a hike around Minnehaha Falls on a day with the heat index of 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And so if you would like to hear more about the hike around uh, Minnehaha Falls on a 98 degree day, you may listen to the fringe of this episode where we extensively cover it in copious amounts of detail. Uh, because this is a special episode, this is indeed the final episode of In Boot Camp. This is In Boot Camp. 26. I'm pretty glad it's over with. Um, these mm-hmm. last couple of months have just been... They've been hard. Yeah, and I, I was chatting with you yesterday on Saturday, which is the usual day that you would go to your Saturday class, and you, you made the comment that it was sure was nice that you didn't have to go to class because it's over. Well, just on a normal day... I like going to bed about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, because I wake up early for my job and stuff. And when you have class till 9.30 and everything it's, else, it's your rough. sleep schedule, and if you're not sleeping right, you're not feeling great. Um, it was just a long, long ride. But we finally got the group project three turned in, and it's over with. We did our presentation. Then just, we finally got it deployed. Everything was good. Um, we were the only group that actually had it up. Uh, okay, so let's 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 not get ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about Group Project Three in order. So, Group Project Three, you had about a month to do Group Project Three. Correct. And during that time, you had four team members, including yourself, of course. Mm-hmm. And you had a few different topics to cover in class during that time. So you finished React up. You did some computer science stuff. Uh, and and that was pretty much the time that you were given there. That seems pretty fair, right? Yep. So over the last few weeks, you know, you you had these grand visions for an uh, an amazing and epic final project, uh, and then you had to sort of slowly re- realize and rein in your expectations a little bit. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh. So last episode we talked about your mail server, or at least that recent episode episode we talked about your mail server. That got cut. That got cut. Okay, that's good. But- I really don't feel like it took away from the project because we could still node mail or work. It just, it just came from a Gmail account. Uh, so that, that functionality worked. So we still hit a goal, just not, I wanted the email to have, you know, a mass.us. I wanted to use our domain. I wanted to have a mail server. Um, so a little bit of the woo factor went away, but we still got it in there. Right. And so it's just wooing in a different way, which is a cool trick. So uh, how cool would it be if we actually got it working? It would have been super cool, but I just knew that wouldn't happen. Uh, so let's talk about your deployment, because I, I can kind of imagine, like, so you, you had a front-end React, uh, you know, component, and you had a back-end API Express component. And, you know, kind of kind of tell me, how did you deploy this thing? Well, we used my Linode, and we we're using Apache 2, which doesn't handle node very well you had to do this virtual host bit of nonsense to get it to go um and there are guides online about how to get apache to um, host this natively um and it was a lot of trial and error uh but in the end once we figured out how to did it we you basically sshed into my server you cloned the repo and then you navigate into the front end and then you um npm run build and then you uh, copied the files into www and so you just so you had to move after you run build you moved it over into the actual 
file and then the back end you just actually i think we just did run dev like we didn't actually make a production build of the back end i i watched you do most of this and i thought it was pretty amusing to watch you do all of this because man was that a lot of work um yeah you know it it turns out that there's a lot of moving pieces when you're trying to deploy multiple things to a server it's not like the good old days of writing php where everything was sort of unified like it all lived in apache land uh so having to have a node process running that means that you need to have a way to have node indefinitely run so you used screen i believe to achieve that which is pretty cool yeah uh, you had to use some kind of weird virtual host plus proxy pass, which I've never used before. And I think you had to look up like 25 guides to figure out how to do it. But it turns out the the secret sauce was to enable it on both HTTP and HTTPS virtual host files. And no guide talked about that in whatsoever form. So if you ever have a blog in the future, I highly recommend talking about that because you will get hits. Because we tried so many blogs, and it really looked like they were all just copying each other. Like, they saw yes. somebody wrote a blog, and then just exact copy of the blog. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of that. We went to 20 different guides, but in reality, I bet it was only two. Yeah. So, so deployment actually went fairly well for you, which was very remarkable. And so you mentioned earlier that you were the only group with a domain name. Yeah, and everyone else was using Heroku except for one bloke who decided to host it all with the Google Firebase. Because I guess Firebase handles deployment too. Sure. So I I would be interested sort of in what they did to deploy the front end onto Heroku. Like, what does that mean in terms of a front end? You know, I don't really know. Um, So when I deployed my... So I did a React project um, for the front end for one of my homeworks and stuff. And I just used GitHub Pages. Uh, GitHub pages works for the front end stuff, but Mm -hmm. they all had like, you know, earth shatter mountain at heroku.com. Of course. Um, They make some amazing, like, I love looking at Heroku deployments. They Mm -hmm. they just use these really nice adjectives. Not as cool as having an actual domain, though. (laughs) And and the domain is actually a pretty good one, at least. So uh, let's talk about contributions. So who did what in this project? Well, um, me. You? Yeah. It, it okay. boiled down to that. Uh, at 610, one of my team members added an image to the about page, and he did it using the browser's GitHub. Like, uh, he used the, you know, editor online. He went to yep. the page and added it. And then from there, you can move to master right there. And Was that the only meaningful contribution before the deadline of 630? Yeah, I, he could not get get to work on his uh, MacBook. Wow, that's pretty exciting because Macs sure do make it easy. Yeah, um, Tyler got zero lines of code in, and Amanda never even cloned the repo. Yep. So kind of bitter. Um, so yes, our project was in the end. I wasn't happy with it and everything else, but I had no help. Um, right. I was quizzing you for guidance and stuff because I, um, I for some reason I I couldn't hit the back end. I opened up Postman even with Postman I couldn't even hit anything and just I got frustrated so many times. Um, and I would I would point you in the right direction. Uh, my my strategy for helping you was basically to read the error message. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite you helped me moments of this project was when I was. I kept on running into problems trying to get it to go. Like, just, I kept on getting all these errors and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with my code. It turns out if I would have just looked at the package JSON and run dev, it would have been nice. Right. And so the reason that was uh, a thing was. I copied the JSON file from somebody else. You copied the JSON file from somebody else and the code that you stole from somewhere else, in addition to that, uh, relied on the fact that npm start would be for production mode specifically, and that breaks pretty much all of your internal code that flips conditions based on which mode you're running in. That was all the um, no the email mailer the uh, ver- email verify verificator. <laughs> yeah, there was some of that, but it was also some of that Mongo stuff that you did. That's so just... I, I I heard that you had to do some type of presentation in addition to the project. So let's let's talk about the presentation next. Yeah. 
How did that go? I. It didn't go well. Um, so our, the Professor Brian ran up to the front and was like, you guys, we can get to Shirley's uh, local bar and grill earlier if you guys do a quick presentation. We don't have to have a formal presentation. Just tell us your, the story of your app, like why did you build it, followed by a quick demo. And I'm like, whew, I am so happy because our presentation was bad and our demo wasn't going to be good because a lot of our features didn't make it in. Um, it was just literally you make an event and view it and then delete it. Um, that was about it. Like there was no searching because I wanted to be able to search for events by categories and everything else. None of that made it in there. Um, and it was great because he just gave us a scapegoat. Like we, we just, we wanted to make it quick. We wanted to make a three minute presentation. It would have been so amazing all because he said, make it quick. Like, and I'm like, this is our saving grace. This is going to be an amazing presentation. My group members who didn't participate in the project decided to make a slideshow. And because they didn't know what they were talking about, because they didn't know the technologies used in the project, because they had never even seen it running because none of them could figure out how to run it locally, um, they had no idea what they were talking about. And they just rambled again and again and again. And when it came time to demo the app, I wasn't allowed to do it. And he basically like, so the sign up page doesn't work. So we're not going to talk about it. But he still went there and started doing input and stuff. Like he started holding a torch above the, this feature doesn't work thing. And it's just, he, it could have been a lot better. It could have been a lot shorter. And it just, it was no fun. It I hated my group members for doing it. I only got to talk about the database slide, which took 10 seconds. I didn't even yep. move to the front. I just spoke from where I was standing on the side, bitterly standing there. <laughs> yeah, it, it does sound like there was a lot of um, make-believe going on with that presentation. Well, how do you it's talk kind of about something you've never looked at? It doesn't exactly. work. Exactly. No, it does not. And it showed. Yep. So after your presentation, uh, after so much make-believe, did anybody ask you and your team any hard-hitting questions about how it all worked? Yes. Uh, when we were talking about the technologies, libraries, and frameworks that our uh, project used, uh, that we use JSFX. And that sounds amazing. What is that? What is JSFX? Oh, I'll get there. So one of the uh, top students in the class just waited to the end, looked right at me and like, Hey, Matt, what, what's JSFX? And I'm like, yeah, uh, it's JSX. We've been using it for three weeks. And yeah, Tyler's just never done it because he still doesn't know React. The day huh. of the project, uh, Tyler's like, I would help you guys, but I just don't know React. Which is kind of concerning because, in my opinion, every person of your group should be doing a little bit of everything. And nobody should be able to graduate and say they know React without actually knowing React. They graduated without even cloning the repo of the final project. Which is quite quite bad. Uh, and, and so I think that's, that's a remarkable outcome. And so she's got the same piece of paper as me. And so when we're at our next job interviews and stuff, we're going to look the same. Sure. So uh, finally, in the group project three section, what grade did you get at the end of all of this? Oh, I got, I got an A. You got an I, A. I was joking with you the whole time when I was using Postman to hit my front end and couldn't hit anything on the back end by hitting the front end. And you're just like, what are you doing? And like, try to make it work. And you're just like, ah. And I'm like, you know, Ryan, I've already earned an A. And then you're like, no way. And the reality is I got an A. Uh, the reality is, unfortunately, that is what happened. Uh, that's That's good. I'm glad you did get an A. That's uh, quite the achievement. That does bring us to our next topic, which is boot camp graduation. Yep. Uh, so graduation ceremony was immediately after presentations. Um, a few people brought their kids with. Um, uh, one person had their parents show up. One person had what maybe was a grandpa or somebody. Um, but the vast majority of the people didn't bring anyone. It was just the people like there is literally like three families there mm -hmm. um, which which i i was kind of expecting more i w didn't want my family there because i knew what was in store for our presentation and i didn't want anyone to remember it right that makes um, sense but yeah it's 
we graduated. I got my little thing. In three weeks, I will get my certificate in the mail. Um, I'll proudly hang it up. I've already picked out a frame on Amazon for eight dollars. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Uh, and so you also posted this nice photo of you and your I don't know what you call it, a cohort or something. Yeah, uh, um, we were the thirteenth. We are the twelfth cohort of the coding boot camp. That is like twelve too many. Uh, and so this is a cool picture because it shows your whole whole group basically. Uh, both that's... my TAs, my instructor. This was so much bigger when we started back in January. So many people right. didn't make it here. Yeah, and that, it, it, it's it's a hard, long time, of course, to uh, continue all this time. Yeah. When we got the JavaScript, a lot of people started having a hard time. Which is bad, because that's when it gets good. Yeah. But, I mean, how do I put it? You had to be present to win, but it was very discouraging if you're actually trying and you couldn't get it to work. And I'm sure that's why Levi left and a few right. other, the other people. And I and I think um you know there's there's a you know a variety of ways to address that kind of problem in a boot camp you know having more TAs having better instructional videos having content to fall back on you know FAQs set up because you know the errors that somebody experiences are very repeatable over time. Yeah. And then we had the oddball ones when it was time for SQL. Like when I was trying to get uh, my SQL workbench going, uh, yeah. I had an error that nobody else had. And Were you I, running Linux? No, I was using Windows at the time. Oh, that was your problem. Yep. And then after I ubuntu fied my life, I stopped having those kind of problems. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about boot camp overall. I would do it again, and I'm proud that I did it. But That's it good. was a weird journey. <laughs> It, yeah, it wasn't I, what I thought. I thought it would be no. a little different. I I think I was hoping that it would be much more rigorous and that there would be actual institutional instruction going on here. Uh, but it does seem like the Trinity curriculum is pretty, pretty broad and not very focused. And there is no room for the instructor to give a little thing. It's just yeah. you follow their instructions. That that's true, but I think I think even if that's the case, I think the biggest problem is that you can get to the end without actually knowing anything at all. Or even or even maybe you do know something, but there is nothing to force you to demonstrate it. And for yeah. me, that's the biggest frustration. Because, like I said, every one of us has that piece of paper now, but and you all look the same. We all look the same, but I can actually you know halfway do everything now. Right. I, I would also say, you know, it's it's also a, a compromise between part-time and full-time. By taking the part-time class, you, you get six months to kind of think about the topics that you learn, which is great. But because it is part-time, and that is the expectation effectively, even though you get six months to think about things, which is good, what 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 comes out of that is you don't actually program every day, possibly. And... It seems to me, after having talked to you and other boot camp graduates uh, in the recent time here, that programming every day or programming more often or just more programming in general seems to be the highest correlation factor with eventual success. Yeah. Now, you programmed more than others, obviously. We pretty much have established that. But still, there's more to do, and it's hard to do that in a non-dedicated five-days-a-week environment. I would love to do that, but with my mortgage and everything going on, that was never going to be an option for me. Right, and that's totally okay. Uh, this this was it. It was this or nothing. It was like this or self-teaching myself on Udemy and asking you questions and stuff. This is part-time, yes, but it is still formal. It's more than just watching YouTube videos of people coding. That might um, have been better. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I did watch stuff like that. Um, like but when again, I was. It's not about watching videos of people coding. It's about actually coding yourself. Yeah. Like, you can watch videos every single day of the week, but if you don't actually ever code anything yourself, it doesn't matter. And I do got a few projects that I'm working on on the side now. Now that boot camp's over with, I don't have to commute anymore. That that frees up a lot of time in my life not having to drive down 35W where you're driving on the other side of the lane. No. Three days a week, no less. Uh, so let's let's talk about the upcoming plans that you have. So, uh, you know, on recent episodes uh, uh, of In Bootcamp, 
you know, you were invited twice to the legendary recruiting event, Hacker X, and you had t- did attend at least one time, which was cool. Uh, I There are no, at least that I know of, Hacker X events in the near future, but there will surely be more in the future. Would you go to a Hacker X event in the future? Yes. Yes, I would. That's good. Would you go to any other type of recruiting event? Um, maybe not speed dating style like Hacker X is, but something a little bit more casual, like you just walk up to tables and you say hi. Yeah, I could. I wonder if there's going to be that at Midwest Midwest JS. Like, yes. so at Open Source North, there was that as well. Yep. Yeah, there's there's probably going to be fewer at Midwest JS, but there certainly will be that. Uh, speaking of Midwest JS, I believe you are thinking of attending. Yep, I know you said that it was beneath you and you've already done it and you already know everyone there. Um, yeah. I still think I would have a good time doing it. I think you would have a good time too. And actually, one of the cool things about it is the first day historically has been all about various topics in a workshop setting. So you bring your computer and you hang out and you sit there and you code stuff all day long. And what's really cool about that is you can sit with two or three people and you just chat and, you know, you talk about work or you talk about what you're learning. And then you talk about solutions to the exercises that the instructor gives you and has you practice. I think that would be super beneficial for somebody like you, especially so early on. Yeah. And it's three days of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I I do hope that you are able to uh, find some vacation time to take that. Well, I I mean, I have like an entire month off of vacation. It's just, am I allowed to use it? is yeah, which the is bad. impossible part of the post office. And roughly, when is Midwest JS? When is that again? Uh, August 9th or 7th through the 9th. So okay. it's 23 days away from now. That's plenty of time. So if I want the early bird thing, I have to do it this week. Right. Otherwise, it's $400 instead of 300 Oh, yeah, you should get on that. Uh, So let's see. What other things are sort of on your upcoming plan list? So the professor walked up to me um, and said, hey, reach out to me tomorrow, and kind of was wondering what he was doing, um, and just said, okay. And then he said, hey, Matt, uh, I didn't want to tell you yesterday and the other people, but I want you to come work for Lead Pages." And I'm like, whoa. And I'm like, yeah, hey, guess what? I'm a full-time professor now at the U. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Because he always what goes is- by Iron Man now, and now he's going to be Professor X. What does that mean, full-time professor? Uh, he's going to be full-time the the U's now pumping these out like crazy. So another two boot camps started while mine was in session, and now he's going to be teaching like four cohorts a week now. So does that mean he's not going to work at Lead Pages anymore? He's leaving. He's leaving okay. Lead Pages. He's okay. leaving Lead Pages, and he's teaching full time. He's doing a f- couple full time boot camps, and then two part time somethings. So, that makes sense. Yeah. So he's going to. That goes well for him. I mean, so once you, because he, this was his first time teaching it. This was his first time seeing the exercises. He didn't know what was coming. Um, He didn't know how it was there. He didn't know. So when they give you things and when you do NPM install, well, that only works if packages are still there. And so if you have something that's, you know, been so deprecated that it's not there anymore, then it throws all the students off. Now he knows how to recover from all that. He knows what examples are broken, which ones are off. And it's just, once you've gone through it the first time, I'm guessing it's just easier and easier every time after that. Yes, until they update the curriculum in a couple of years. Yeah, but that, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. I agree. Uh, so I, and so working at Lead Pages, does that seem like something you'd want to do? Well, here's the thing. I asked him, like, so is there something online where I could see what the job is? Like, is it, are they looking for somebody who's doing front end stuff or they're looking for a new ui designer or are they looking for somebody to just answer the phones i have no idea there isn't a job position he's mm-hmm. giving me uh he gave my name and a few other people and our linkedins and everything and our resumes to his hiring manager saying like hey these people are good but so a start i have no idea what's going to come of it i have no idea what the offer is um and that's kind of, you know, just we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, I think one of the things you'll have to do is follow up with him and formally with lead pages at some point, because almost certainly this will slip through somebody's hands and it will be up to you to put it back in there. Yeah. And I'm just hoping they actually put up because right now they just had a uh, sales position on lead pages website. Sure. Like there, yeah. there wasn't even a developer job on their site right now. Mm hmm. Um, I'm sure that's always changing, though. But as of me looking, no. And that Health United uh, 
thing. I missed the internship for that. There, I, but when I heard about it, it was already too late. That's probably okay. Uh, you don't really want an internship per se, yeah. so that's probably fine. Um, other than that, I'm just going to be finishing some of the, re- the React course I purchased on Udemy along with the computer science course. Um, you have fake mock real world work for me for working on the Nexus titler. Um, and you said you'd do code reviews, so you want me to fork it and make my things. And then you'd actually do a review with me like you would do with one of your underlings at. Yep, exactly. And uh, so the titler has been a tool that we've used internally for many years, but Historically, the problem is it's really old, coded in Moo Tools, and uh, I don't know if you've heard about this, but Moo Tools is not really the current generation cream of the crop front end library tool anymore. So, uh, recoding it would be really nice. And the other reason for doing this, giving this to you to do instead of me to do, is uh, I don't want to. It's good experience for you, and I, I just, uh, I want somebody else to do it. Well, I just like it that it works. I just have to make it work differently. Like exactly, I already know the features it needs to have. Like, there's nothing to. There's no like. Well, what do I? What new things do need to do? It's just updating what already works. Right. So this this is a code base that's entirely coded with HTML uh, and uh, MooTools JavaScript code, and the goal is to just port it into a React type of mindset and that's pretty much it like it's super i mean it'll be work you'll have to learn mutuals a little bit to understand the goal and how things worked back then but like it's not super complicated so just on a side note um mutuals hasn't been touched in over three years and the last thing to touch was the docs yeah that, that seems fair yeah it does seem kind of dead it is cool uh but you know, if it works, it works. So um, are you going to be updating your resume or your website soon? Yes. Uh, one of the things that the University of Minnesota allegedly gives you is your, well, your diploma at the end, but they also give you a digital certificate. Um, and I, they say it's like a badge thing that you can embed in your website. And I haven't heard anything about that. So I have to reach out with uh, my success coordinator that told me about this feature that I don't think exists. I don't know if I would say it's a good idea to embed that on your website. That sounds bad. Or at least link to it. Yeah, like link to it, but like programmatically embed it with JavaScript into the page so that the SEO crawlers don't see it. Oh. Don't want to give them any link juice that they don't need. <laughs> uh, so your resume... um. You know, it, 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 it doesn't yet say that you have completed boot camp, and so that's probably something you'll be doing soon. I, yep. I think that'll be cool. So it'll and be able to homepage, say... my homepage, I got to change up a little as well. It'll say January 2019 to uh, July 2019. And then you'll be good to go. It'll, yeah. it'll be done. I'm, I'm glad it's over. It's... I know you say it was not structured enough and everything else. It wasn't. It was still plenty hard though for me. wasn't hard wasn't hard enough. Yeah. Because you do actual hires in the real world and stuff, and would you hire me with the little experience I have? No. Yeah. So it wasn't enough. The boot camp. I think in the meantime, you know, but hopefully, uh, for your own amusement and for uh, my own amusement, uh, with the Tyler and things. You will actually program relatively frequently because that is, again, single biggest factor. Yeah. And then I still got meetups to go to. I still uh, have the ears. Like, I always hear about upcoming events and stuff. Um, I mean, just because I'm going back to the post office full time and only doing that doesn't mean that I won't be still hearing what's going on in the Midwest. Yes. Especially at the JS. Yeah. Yeah. But that's coming up. There's React Conf. I'm probably going to go to Las Vegas for that. Uh, okay. I hope I hope you enjoy that. Wow, you're making big progress this month. Graduation, <laughs> oh. Mall of America, Las Vegas. Okay. Could you even imagine me on no, an airplane? No, no, no. no I, I, I can't. My feet will never leave this earth. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, I just just gotta sneak one more upcoming event coming up. Um. 
next month, August 20th, at WeWork in downtown Minneapolis on the 39th floor, I get to demo um, whatever I want. I could do something personal, I could do uh, my group project. It's going to be five different cohorts from the boot camp. It's going to be four of us, um, full stack web dev people, and then one cohort will be data visualization people. Um, I don't know what they're going to be demoing, but employers from the area will be there, alcohol will be there, and it's just a way to show off everything in a casual environment. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Well, that sounds good. I, I'm glad. I'm glad that we've come to a stunning conclusion here of in boot camp. Uh, and you know, you know how we always end these shows. Uh, we have to do it one last time. Where can we find you on the internet? You can find me at matthewbutchels.com and the nexus.tv slash peoples. That, that's right. And of course, you can find me, Ryan Rampersad, just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Mar, And of course, on my website, ryanrampersad.com, where I have added a book recommendation section. Just scroll all the way down and you will see it right at the bottom there. It's pretty cool because I list all the books that I am reading and have read. And if interesting enough, I will even leave a summary of my thoughts on them. It's like having a blog, but it's actually just a website. It's kind of cool that way. Uh... Did you know that you can leave us comments and feedback on reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV? If you didn't know that, you should do that, especially if you have listened to the journey of Matthew Petchel on this podcast in bootcamp. And of course, if you like this kind of show and other shows that we do here at the Nexus, you can support us at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Have a good one. Have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological convergence. convergence. Hello, listeners of In Boot Camp. This is Ryan, and I wanted to say thank you for listening to all of the episodes of In Boot Camp over the last seven and a half months. It has been an amazing journey recording this series with you and Matt over the last seven months, and I thought it would be fun just to put on a little note at the end of all of this. Matt has gone to many special events specifically because of his endeavor here at the University of Minnesota Boot Camp for web development. Now, while things are still bumpy for him and things may not go as well as he always hopes, he did an amazing job at this boot camp and he did an amazing job of recording this series. I really enjoyed recording this episode at the end of the boot camp with Matt. I really enjoyed recording this series with Matt after having gone many years not recording with Matt regularly since at the Nexus, the premier weekly show of the Nexus, ended many years ago. I hope to record another series just like this, whether it be named In Boot Camp or another show. We'll see. Once again, thank you for listening. Thank you for being out there. Have a good one. Watch out for cars.